Hello, it's Elder here, and today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you about this Sunjack Solar Charger. Uh, basically, I spend a lot of time out in the field recording videos, whether they're tutorials uh, for my Natural Training Center members, or just uh, reviewing gear. And the one issue that I kept happening is I use my phone a lot for the video, and my phone would end up dying halfway through, especially on an extended uh, stay. Whether it was a weekend, whether it was four or five days, I'd bring some power banks with me, but uh, even they would get depleted. So I knew I had to find something, find some type of a niche, and uh, got to test out a few different solar chargers, and uh, was very impressed here with this Sunjack. So let's get into uh, some of the specs. So first off, you can tell by the size. I mean, very compact here. Has a mesh bag for all the extra components. Has a controller here for uh, two different USB inputs. That I'll get into a little bit later. And what it has is once it does open up, we have about, uh, or we have four different panels here inside of this Sunjack. It's a uh, total of 14 watts. And some other stuff that actually comes with it is a power bank, uh, an 8,000 milliamp power bank. So as far as with my phone, uh, I'm able to charge it two to three times, but I also bring other power packs with me. Uh, this one's 22,000 milliamp. I have another one that's 10,000 milliamp. And uh, so if I ever thought that I would need enough juice or even for emergency preparedness, I'd probably carry the uh, 22,000 milliamp with me just to give it a little bit more storage. Obviously, I'd be adding more weight, so it kind of depends on the uh, mission at hand. Uh, this also comes with a couple inexpensive uh, clips here so that you could go ahead and fasten this uh, to your backpack. There's all these little uh, eyelet type uh, straps or connectors all over here. Uh, so whatever, you know, depending on your pack, depending on your setup, depending on your kit, uh, you have uh, various ways that you could go ahead and hook it up. And if you don't want to use these, you could always strap them down with some uh, 550 cord. Also comes with a one uh, micro USB uh, charger or cable. So keep that in mind. If you're uh, operating both ports, you're probably going to need uh, more than one. So as I mentioned, there is a smart controller in here with a USB 1 and a USB 2. Right now I have it connected to USB 2. Uh, they're both uh, 2 amp. So once again, it's a smart controller, so it prevents against overcharging uh, and things of that nature. And once again, I had seen some reviews where they said, make sure you stick with USB 2 because you'll get more uh, ampage out of it and USB 1 will be less. But when I did contact Sunjack, they told me that uh, either or and you're good to go because it is a smart controller. So it'll basically detect your device and, uh, you know, pretty much know where to allot the, the amount of power that's needed for that specific device. Now, as you look up uh, here on the little controller, there is a red light on, and that's of course because we have these solar panels open, and even though they're just partially open, they're already receiving a current. So just for the purpose of course this demonstration, just to fit everything into the view here, we do have the 8,000 milliamp battery that it uh, does come with here, uh, as far as this particular uh, Sunjack setup. And uh, you can tell here if we go ahead and connect this in, it'll start charging right, right off the bat even though of course we're getting less wattage because we only have one and a half panels exposed right now. If we expose them more the way that they're supposed to be, um, obviously you'll be getting a lot more juice to power your device that much quicker. So once again, this is going into the battery itself. You can go ahead and hook up your device, whether it's a tablet or whether it's a phone or other USB device that would take this type of uh, setup. And uh, you can go ahead and connect it directly into it. I don't suggest it, at least for my own peace of mind. Now I'm, so, I'm not some uh, electronic uh, wizard, but I also know that if I was going to hook up my phone, they're very sensitive. Uh, you know, I don't want to cause any kind of damage because they are extremely expensive, a lot more expensive than a battery bank. So what I do is I like to have this hooked up and then go ahead and connect my phone to the actual uh, battery bank here, uh, just giving it another filter. Uh, doesn't matter how smart these things here are, things go awry, it's electronics, there's always uh, some uh, type of failure that could happen. And instead of uh, ruining my phone, I'd rather it stop here at the uh, battery bank. Now in this mesh uh, setup here, there is a little area or a little band where I can go ahead or you can go ahead and uh, stage and secure your uh, battery bank, whether, whether it's the sun, the uh, 8,000 milliamp that came with it or uh, one of the other ones that I showed you previously. That way it does stay in there stationary. Uh, keep in mind here, of course, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm kind of just uh, keeping everything in the viewfinder. But if you are out there, you're going to want to keep this angled and exposed uh, to as much sunlight as you can get. Uh, time is going to vary. Uh, the last time that I had charged my phone, a couple days ago that I was out there, I um, 
basically took, I think it was a little bit less than five hours, but I'm talking about direct sunlight. Sun was pounding on the area that I was in. So that was pretty good that I was able to charge my phone from pretty much 3% to 100% in, um, in a little less than five hours. Once again, that was ideal conditions. Uh, so keep in mind when it is a little bit hazier or you're not getting enough sun or you're not keeping uh, uh, abreast of how the sun is changing throughout the day and uh, being able to alter your setup so that you're getting the uh, most amount of exposure from that sun. The other thing that you want to do also is make sure that you keep your devices that are actually getting charged, whether it is the power bank or whether it is your phone or your tablet, away from the direct sunlight. Uh, you have this pad, uh, the little pouch here that you could secure, and of course, as long as this remains in the shade, you're pretty much good to go. Uh, try to avoid keeping it flat. Sometimes it's not possible when you're out there in the field because you don't have too many, uh, too many conveniences to work with, so to speak. But um, if you do leave uh, some space be uh, below it, you'll get some extra airflow in there, uh, which will help to keep your uh, devices cool. But just like anything else, make sure that you're monitoring it. Uh, touch it every once in a while. Make sure it's not really heated up or burning up. Once again, they're electronics, things can go bad, things can go awry, and the last thing you want to do is have some kind of uh, explosion while you're out there in the field. And not only are you gonna ruin your, uh, your high-speed gear, but uh, it could also call, cause injury, uh, which is even worse. Now, these panels are weather resistant, but uh, the manufacturer does state that if it is pouring out there, don't leave these out there in the rain uh, when you're out there in the field, so or anywhere, even if you're operating this from your home in an emergency situ situation. All right, so uh, just keep that in mind. As I said, they are very durable, uh, but you know, uh, also the more it has to be exposed to the sun. So if you're out there in the field and it starts getting leaves because it's a windy day or sand or dirt or whatever, make sure you keep all of that debris off of it so that you can maximize exposure and uh, get your devices charged as fast as possible. As I mentioned earlier, my primary reason was of course for uh, utilizing it, so to speak, for work for videos that I'm making while I'm out there in the field. But when I look at this for emergency preparedness, uh, as I stated earlier, I used to carry a tablet around, and what I do now to try to minimize everything is I have one of these little uh, uh, micro SD card readers that hook up right into my phone or right into a laptop, and I'm able to go ahead, plug it into the uh, micro USB slot uh, on a phone. Now, this is a very old phone just for demonstration purposes, and then I could go ahead and hook up the card, a couple different slots here, right, if I want to use the actual adapter or if I just want to use the micro card itself, and then I could have access to PDF information, uh, tutorials that I've saved, things of that nature. So in an emergency where the grid goes down, I'm still able to have access to uh, quality information that I might need, uh, plan identification, first aid, uh, coordinates, maps, things of that nature. So the bottom line here is if you uh, are in the market for a solar charger, whether it is for recreational purposes or for emergency preparedness purposes, go ahead and take a look at this uh, Sunjack uh, setup here. There's a few different choices that they have. Uh, once again, depending on your needs, as you can tell now the uh, light is off because the panels are folded up. Um, anyway, go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, I was very impressed with it. I've tested a lot of different solar panels. They just didn't seem to uh, stick up to their claim, so to speak. So uh, once again, as those of you that have been following me for a while know that those reviews never end up on my site because I don't really want to waste your time, um, nor waste mine. But this one is added as my personal gear, and uh, I foresee me using it, at least through this season, until uh, something better comes around. So, once again, this is Helder. Hope that you uh, found this review helpful.